Welcome back to another Eye Care for Your Brain with board certified neuropsychologist, Dr. Karen Sullivan. We are talking about our top 10 secrets for brain health and I am on number six. Remember what we're always trying to do is to reduce the known risk factors that increase the risk of cognitive impairment, including dementia. And we're trying to increase what we call our cognitive reserve. So I try to tell you what not to do and what to do. So tonight falls under a what to do. Number six, top 10 brain health secret from me is to prioritize uninterrupted sleep and deep rest. Sleep is a staple of physical, mental, and cognitive health. Deep sleep, REM sleep in particular, is critical for memory formation, emotional processing, and cellular restoration of neurons. Many people struggle with sleep due to age-related changes, lifestyle issues, anxiety, chronic pain. There's many reasons that you might find yourself having sleepless, fitful night's rest, but it's not something that we want you to accept or to treat with alcohol or over-the-counter medications. The very most important thing to do when you're having trouble sleeping is to make sure you go back to the staples of sleep hygiene, which I'm gonna to talk to you about right now. Once you do these common sense things, if you still struggle, I'm gonna tell you an over-the-counter I recommend, and then I'm gonna tell you the most evidence-based thing you can do after that. So this one's gonna come in three parts. The first thing is going to bed and waking up around the same time every night. I know that can maybe be boring, and we like this idea like, oh, I do things a little different on the weekends, but the truth is the brain loves routine and predictability. So that's the very most basic thing you should be doing. Number two relates to naps. Naps are actually not bad. They can be very brain positive, but you do need to have some rules on them. No naps longer than an hour and none after 3 p.m. or we think they start to cut in to that night's REM sleep total. Number three is avoiding screens at least two hours before bed. The blue light from devices is interpreted by the brain as sunlight. When we have exposure to strong sunlight, we start to pump out cortisol and we start to suppress melatonin production and absorption because we're supposed to be getting ready for activity. Avoiding screens two hours before bed is very, very evidence-based and something that you should absolutely make sure you do before you wind up taking any type of sleep medication. Number four is to make your bedroom a sanctuary. Reduce any non-essentials that are in there. Get the exercise equipment out, get the TV out. You are not supposed to be eating in bed. You're not supposed to be drinking in bed. Your bed is, has to be associated with deep rest and rejuvenation in your mind. The brain is all about habits. It's all about pairing two stimulus together and being able to take a shortcut. If when your brain sees the bed, it thinks that you're gonna be there watching hours and hours of TV, which by the way, has got a lot of bright blue light to it, your brain is going to be more activated. You need a pre-sleep ritual to start to give your brain the association that we are not taking in new information now. We are going to try to be more self-contained and we're going to try to calm ourselves down into a restful, resting place for our nervous system. The next one is if you have trouble sleeping after 20 or 30 minutes, it's time to get up and do something in low light that is very kind of mundane and boring. A lot of times people will turn and get on the device, they'll go on social media, they'll play solitaire. These things are actually not advised. What would be ideal would be to move locations go to a reading chair with a backlit light and pick up a boring book. Nothing dramatically riveting, uh, nothing um, thought provoking, just something kind of mundane and boring. After you do all these things, if and when you are successful at doing all those things, you then can graduate on to trying melatonin. So what we like you to think about with melatonin is that less is more. One milligram will get you further than three, three will get you further than 10, 10 will get you further than 20, and so on. What we're simply trying to do with melatonin supplementation is mimic the natural production of melatonin, which does go down as we get older, 
but also as we are exposed to bright lights. If you try melatonin for 10 nights and it does not seem to get you long continuous periods of sleep, then you should get a sleep study. One of the worst things you can do is treat your own sleep symptoms with alcohol. It does help you fall asleep a little bit faster, but it breaks up your sleep cycle later in the night and you wind up waking up earlier than you want. We also know that a lot of those over-the-counters contain a high amount of what we call anticholinergic properties. So this is your nighttime sleep aids that essentially have a form of Benadryl in them, which makes us feel sleepy. The problem is, is that it does the opposite of what the dementia medications on the market do, specifically Dinepazil and Aricept. It is putting it is doing the opposite of putting choline into your brain, which the Aricept does. It is removing choline. One of the ways you can know if this is happening to you is you are dry. You got dry mouth, dry eyes, difficulty urinating. If you have that set of symptoms, chances are you're going to have some memory problems that also go along with it. So it's kind of like an anti-dementia pill. That's the way I would like you to think about it. How many hours of sleep we all night for how many hours of sleep we all need for brain health is actually um, very variable and related to the genetics of how well we break down something called adenosine. Some people are very efficient at breaking it down and some people just take a lot longer. So there's no set number of hours I can give you. But what I can tell you is that you need to sleep long enough to wake up feeling rested and rejuvenated and ready for your day. And if that's not happening, chances are you're paying a price in terms of your brain health. So please prioritize uninterrupted sleep. If you are struggling with a chronic sleep problem, remember that there's also evidence that deep rest gives us some of the same benefits as REM sleep. So the worst thing we can do when we're sleeping and start to get freaked out that we're not sleeping because it's hurting us, because that's only gonna increase anxiety. So sometimes when I can't sleep, I just try to focus on slow, deep breaths and trying to relax myself as much as possible. And remember that shutting out as much stimulation as I can, making sure that I'm not creating a worsening problem by getting anxious about it, and making sure I went through and did all of those sleep hygiene checks is a great way of making me feel like I'm in control of my sleep and that I can do some changes in my behavior to make it better. I hope this mini lecture helped you all and tune in next time for the next top 10 secret of brain health. Take care, bye. Mm -hmm.